Good morning, coaches. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about uh, why mistakes matter. Um, you know, in the context of sport, in the, in the context of game, we want players to be successful. We want them to win. We want them to do better today than they did yesterday. And, and tomorrow, we want them to do better than they did today. And so that idea of looking for improvement um, is, is, is a huge part of what we do and what we're looking for. Um, sometimes, however, we start to get into mindsets of improvement means success, which means the elimination of mistakes. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about why, in the context of learning, mistakes are important. Um, so what you see here, uh, you see a little XY graph. Um, we have on our sort of Y uh, axis, we have success low to high, and we have difficulty low to high. So I'm going to kind of talk about how like the, the, the correlation between success and difficulty and how we can think about that as coaches can help us sort of uh, think about where the right kinds of mistakes lie. And so um, here we have um, Coach Scott versus Coach Cortez. We're going to be doing a 1v1, Scott versus Coach Cortez, and we're going to kind of use that as a framework for how we can think about mistakes. So if we have Coach Scott versus Coach Cortez in 1v1, you know, uh, Cortez passes the ball to Coach Scott, Coach Scott takes it, and they play for five minutes. Um, they play for five minutes, very open-ended, goal to goal, 1v1, and after five minutes, Scott is crushing Cortez, crushing. After five minutes, Cortez literally has not had the ball pass halfway, he's not had a shot, while Coach Scott, every time he gets it, he is by Cortez, and he's got like a, we'll say, like a 90% success rate in terms of when he gets the ball, he gets a shot, whereas Cortez has uh, the opposite. He's only got like, you know, he's had one shot, and it was from before half, not doing so well. So Coach Scott, for Coach Scott, this 1v1 scenario, Coach Scott versus Cortez, the difficulty for him is very, very low, and his success rate is very, very high. On the other hand, we have Cortez, and his difficulty level in the scenario, very, very high, and his success, very, very low. So we're all sitting back watching this, and we're thinking, you know, how can we, how can we kind of get these more closely connected? Because right now, when Coach Cortez has his difficulty so high that he has such little success, he's not really learning. His brain is kind of turned off. He's not got enough success that's keeping him interested. He's not got enough dopamine that he wants to continue. Similarly, Coach Scott, he's got too much success. He is in a zone right now where his brain is also kind of turning off because it's not difficult enough. He's losing interest. So how can we meet these more into the middle? So one thing we might add is a restriction for Coach Scott is, hey, Coach Scott, you have five seconds from the time you receive the ball to get a shot off. You can have as many touches in that five seconds as you want, but as soon as Cortez passes you the ball to start the play, you have five seconds to get the shot off. Play five more minutes, and we notice something happens. We notice that Cortez is able to defend a little more successfully because he knows that Coach Scott has to play quicker, so he can adjust how he defends to increase his success rate. Similarly, Coach Scott, while at the same time continuing to be successful, isn't quite as successful as before. So we've noticed the, this gap is kind of narrowed. So first, for Coach Scott, we notice his success rate is now about 80%. He is still doing well, he's still being successful, but not quite as successful as before. Meanwhile, Coach Cortez, he is also being a little bit more successful. Uh, and the difficulty, similar, is, is a little bit less. Uh, but, and so we're getting closer. Uh, the next thing we might add is, okay, for the next five minutes, Coach Scott, same thing, five seconds. However, in addition to only having that five second window, you only get to use your left foot. Coach Cortez, keep it open. You do what, you have no restrictions. And we see, all of a sudden, these narrow. So now, the difficulty level for Coach Scott is increasing, further restrictions, further conditions to challenge him. And he is now at about 70%. So his success rate is now about 70%. Coach Cortez, meanwhile, difficulty is decreasing for him. He has an opponent who can operate only in, under certain um, uh, conditions and his success right now is about 65%. Now here is where we see the sweet spot. So when we think learning, you know, our brains are trained to look for inconsistencies and patterns where we, where we operate. When we are operating at a too high success rate, this zone is called a performance zone. So anything basically above 80%, or above 
is a performance zone and our brains will not learn in this zone. Our brains shut off, they don't see enough inconsistencies in the environment to attune to better information. We stop exploring, our success rates uh, can actually be an inhibitor of how we learn. So in other words, when there are not any mistakes, we stop learning. Similarly, when we look at that 60% or less, this zone is also this zone is also a bad zone. This zone is where we see too many mistakes and our brain similarly shut off and we stop learning. This is, I call this the abyssal zone. When you go deep in the ocean, you get to the darkness and you can't see, you can't operate, your brain shuts off, it's the abyssal zone. So we have performance zone, abyssal zone. This zone right in here, this 80% to 60%, right? This is our Goldilocks zone. This is the sweet spot because this is the zone at which our brains are keyed in. Our brains see enough mistakes, but have enough success that we are able to remain competitive. We remain engaged. The dopamine is firing because we're getting some success, but not so much that it's too easy. So we can have players and teams when we are performing too high, when we are too successful, we're not learning. It's no longer a learning environment. Similarly, when it's too difficult, we're no longer learning. It's no longer a learning environment. We wanna be able to find this zone right here because when we can have some success, but not so much that it's too easy, but not too many that it's too difficult, that is where our brains are going to learn. So in the context of learning, you know, we wanna see mistakes because mistakes are important to keep our brains engaged and to keep us learning. And this isn't limited to training either. We wanna see, especially for the younger, younger ages, training, practices, games, anything we do, we wanna be able to find that Goldilocks zone of success. 60 to 80%, just enough that we remain engaged, but not so much that we are too, excuse me, too successful. So when we kinda of think about what does the context of our training look like, are we seeing mistakes that players are having to struggle a little bit? Not too much? Not too little, but just right. So mistakes, mistakes matter. Can we think about the right kinds of mistakes that we wanna to see to keep our players engaged, to see, keep our players learning so that they can remain competitive, they can remain involved, and we can keep as many as possible for as long as possible at this high level as possible. Mistakes matter. Cheers.